What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh and it's no surprise that rich people know how to use the tax code to their advantage. I mean, Warren Buffett talks about how he pays lower tax rate than his secretary and Donald Trump openly talks about how he doesn't pay any taxes. As an attorney, I can tell you that there's a difference between tax avoiding and tax evading. Tax evading is illegal. You're doing a crime and you will go to jail. Tax avoiding is 100% legal. Now you're using the IRS rule book as a guideline on what you can do legally to not pay taxes. This is what rich people specialize in. They want to know what the IRS rule book says that way they can pay the least amount of taxes legally. The interesting thing is I never grew up learning about any of this. The first time I was exposed to any sort of financial education was when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki and not too long ago I was in Arizona talking with Robert Kiyosaki and he told me that the reason why he's so rich is because he's in debt. I save gold. I don't save dollars, I borrow dollars. That's why you wanna to listen to Dave Ramsey, who's a good friend of mine, live debt free. I go, why are my friends all billionaires and they're deeply in debt? I don't even need real estate, I use debt. I'm just looking for an excuse for somebody to give me a loan. Now, handling debt isn't for everybody. It requires a certain level of financial education, it increases your risk, and it requires some expertise in what you're doing. But what many rich people do who have mastered debt and taxes is they follow a system called BBD, which stands for Buy, Borrow, Die. This system allows many rich people to now borrow money and live their life wealthy and pay zero dollars in taxes legally. So what I want to do today is go over how rich people use debt and taxes to their advantage to make themselves wealthier. That way you can potentially use this to your advantage as well because the reality is this is how the system works and this is how the tax code works and you can either learn it and use it or not. But here in this video, I'm gonna go over how it all works that way at least you understand. Wealthy people are not stretching themselves thin and going into debt so they can have a fancy car and wear Gucci and wear Louis Vuitton and go on fancy vacations. They go into debt for one reason and one reason only. It's for income. If it doesn't produce income, they're not gonna go in debt to buy it. There are two general ways to do this. You can do this through business or you can do this through real estate. A third way that sometimes people talk about is through investing their money, but when you invest your money, you're either investing your money in businesses or real estate to take advantage of the debt and tax laws. So I'm just gonna focus on the business and real estate side and just understand that investing is incorporated into both of these. The way the tax code is made, it's designed to incentivize people that are producing jobs, producing homes, and producing things for the economy. But if you're just a W-2 employee and all you do is you make money and you spend it, it is gonna be extremely difficult, actually impossible for you to take advantage of the system because the tax code is not incentivizing you to really do anything. The tax code incentivizes you to invest and create and produce. It's not incentivizing you to just consume and spend and work. Now that doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of anything that I'm gonna talk about if you're an employee. That just means you're gonna to have to think a little bit bigger and do some things with your money outside of your job that way you can take advantage of the system. And what you'll start to realize is if you don't understand the system, then you don't get any of the benefits. Like one of the biggest benefits Benefits that people talk about when it comes to home ownership and tax breaks is if you own a home and you have a mortgage, you get a mortgage interest rate deduction, which is great for your taxes and you get to take advantage of the system. But that's one big lie. Rich people and wealthy people don't care about the deduction because it's pennies compared to some of the other breaks that you can get if you understand how the system works. So let me start by talking here on the business side of things. The first thing that you have to understand is that you are taxed on your income. If you make a salary, if you make an income from your job or your business, you are gonna be taxed on the income. If you work a job and you make $100,000, you're taxed on the $100,000. If you own a business and you pay yourself a $100,000 salary, you're gonna be taxed on the $100,000 salary. But one of the things that you can do is not get paid through your business. So if you don't wanna pay any taxes, then you don't wanna have any income. Now at first glance, you're gonna say, if I have no income, then I have no money to eat but that's not exactly correct. What some rich people are able to do is instead of taking out an income, is they borrow against the value of their business. So let's assume that you build a business and it's worth a million dollars. Well, instead of you taking out a salary of $100,000, you can go and take a loan against the value of your business for $100,000. Now, you still have $100,000 in your pocket, but this debt isn't taxable. 
because you don't actually pay yourself anything. You're borrowing money from the bank, and now you have $100,000 in your pocket just like before, but this is tax-free because this is debt. Now, the thing that you have to remember is this $100,000 that you borrow from the bank isn't your money. It's money that you're gonna have to give back to the bank plus interest. So if you have to pay this money back to the bank at, let's say, 6% interest, what you need to do is you gotta make sure that your business is growing by at least, what? At least 6% a year. Because if your business is growing by 6% or more a year, if your business is growing by 7% a year, then you came out a winner. So you didn't take an income, you don't have to pay any taxes on the $100,000, you borrow this money from the bank tax-free, and if you can grow the business by more than 6%, well now, you're a winner, and you didn't have to pay any taxes. Elon Musk is probably the most popular example of this in action because he built Tesla. But while he was building Tesla for a number of years, he never paid himself a salary. So a lot of people were upset because he was worth billions and billions of dollars, but he paid zero dollars in taxes. The reason why he paid zero dollars in taxes was because he was paid not in dollars, but in stock options. So he never really got any money in the bank from his company. What he did was he got these stock options saying that he had the ability to buy Tesla shares for about $6 a share. It was something like $6 and some change, and he was given millions of shares. So when the stock price went up to $1,000 a share from $6 a share, he saw a lot of appreciation in the value of his stock options. And considering that he had millions and millions of stock options, he had stock options worth billions of dollars. Now again, this wasn't cash that he had in his personal checking account. This was the value of his investment, of his asset, his stock in Tesla. But instead of actually selling his stock and having this cash come into his bank account from the sale, that would be taxable. What he did was he went to the bank and he told them, hey, I have the stock worth a million dollars. Just for example, give me a loan for $100,000. The banks were happy to do that because then the banks would make 6% interest and now all Elon Musk has to do is make sure that his stock is growing faster than the interest that he's paying because as long as he keeps doing that, he's coming out on top, he has cash in his pocket to live his life and he doesn't have to pay a penny in taxes. Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle, did the exact same thing. He had access to 250 million shares of Oracle, but if he sold those shares, he'd have a big taxable event. So instead of selling his shares and paying a whole bunch of money in taxes, he used the value of his shares to go to the bank and open up a $9.7 billion credit line. And now this is money that he can use to live his life. He's got to pay interest to the bank, but as long as the value of his company, his stock is growing faster than the interest rate that he's paying, he's a winner. And then after that, they follow what I was talking about in the beginning of this video, which is BBD buy, borrow, die. What that means is you can keep doing this again and again and again, and as long as the value of your underlying asset, in this case, the stock, the company keeps growing, you can just do this until you die. Now you get to live your life, you get to have all of the nice things, and you never have to pay a penny in taxes, and then when you die, you pass your shares onto somebody else, and the person who gets your shares, your new company, they get something called stepped up basis, and they don't have to worry about the major tax implications because of the stepped up basis. What that means is let's assume that you have a company worth a million dollars, but your basis, which you bought it for, is a thousand dollars. So in Elon Musk's case, remember he was getting shares for six dollars a share, and then when the Tesla company went up to a thousand dollars a share, if he sold his stock at a thousand, he would have to pay taxes on his profit, which is the difference between a thousand dollars and six dollars, which is nine hundred and ninety-four dollars per share. So that's a lot of taxable income. So assuming here that you had a basis of a thousand dollars, and now it went up to a million dollars, you have almost a million dollars in taxable income. So if you were to sell, you'd have a big tax bill. So one of the things that you can do is the buy, borrow, die. And now if you die, your heirs, let's assume it's your kids, get this million dollar asset. And then when they get this million dollar asset, they get stepped up basis. So the IRS assumes that they don't get it for $1,000. The IRS assumes that they bought it for a million. And so if your kid now sell this asset for a million dollars, they have zero dollars in taxable income. If they sell it for 1.1 million, then their taxable income is $100,000. So you only have to pay taxes then on any gains above the $1 million, which is what the kids got. Now at this point, if you're thinking, just breathe, that's really cool if you are a billionaire like Elon Musk or Larry Ellison, but I don't have a billion dollar or a multi-million dollar business, so I can't take advantage of this. Well, there's some other things that you can do. If you have your own business or you're a side hustler, so now you're not a W-2 employee, you are a contractor, you have your own small business, well, what you have to remember is you only pay taxes on what's left. So you have your income that comes in, and then you pay your expenses, which are your deductions, and this is your taxable income. So what you have to understand is what 
can fall here into your taxable income. Because a lot of times people ask, is this thing deductible? Is it deductible for me to go on a particular trip? Is it deductible for me to buy a certain item? Well, a better question to ask is, how can it become deductible? Because almost anything can be a tax deduction if you know how to ask the right questions. This is where it pays, literally, to have a good accountant who's a tax advisor who can tell you what's going on and how you can use your money that way you have less taxable income legally while you can still buy all the things that you want. So, for example, one of the things that's going on uh, until the end of 2022 is the tax code is giving bigger tax breaks for business owners that are eating out at restaurants. So if you go out and you take your employees out to eat, you get a 100% tax break until the end of 2022 as a way to incentivize people going out to eat at restaurants as a way to help stimulate the economy. So if you have people on your team or if you are a side hustler, if you're a business owner, you have the opportunity now to get a tax break for eating out at a restaurant. We here at the Minority Mindset Companies went to a hybrid style work office after the pandemic hit, which means that people come in the office when they want. You can work from home whenever you want. But once a week, we do something called team day where the team comes into the office and every week in this team day, we go out to eat at a restaurant. Now, we didn't start doing this because of the tax break that we were gonna get. We did this for fun, but it's kind of a nice bonus that 100% of the money that we're spending at the restaurant is a tax break on my taxes. Let me give you another example. If you're watching this video when it goes live, I will be on a two month business trip travel where I'll be staying in San Diego with my business partner, working on a whole bunch of different things. I'll be meeting with a bunch of different business owners out there, doing some interviews, meeting some influencers. So doing work out of San Diego, I'll be living in an Airbnb with my business partner, and I should also mention that my business partner is my wife. This is a tax deduction and it reduces my taxable income. Now, you might not be able to reduce 100% of every dollar that you spend, but if you have a good tax advisor, if you have a good tax accountant, they'll be able to help guide you and show you how you can spend money and have that money be a tax deduction. Now, the money has to be spent in a way that benefits your business, but if you are a true entrepreneur, a business owner, a side hustler, guess what? Your life, a lot of times, is your business. And so you have to understand how you can use this system to your advantage, that way you can legally pay less money in taxes. Because remember, the IRS is just a rule book. You wanna make sure you understand how the rule book works, that way you can use it to your advantage. Now what if you're completely not an entrepreneur? You hate the idea of starting your own business, you hate the idea of being a side hustler, you love the security of your job, and you can't leave that. You have to just work a job, and now what do you do to get some of these benefits? Now obviously one of the things that you can do is invest your money yourself, because when you invest your money, you get natural tax breaks, because investment income is a lower taxed income than your job income. But the second thing that you can do is through real estate. Let me show you one of the reasons why rich people love investing in real estate. So let's assume that you go out and you buy a property for one million dollars and this property generates cash flow of seventy thousand dollars a year that means you buy this property for a million dollars then this property generates rent because let's say it's an apartment complex people pay rent now you have to pay all your expenses you have to pay taxes you have to pay insurance you have to pay your management people you have to pay your maintenance fees after all those expenses you are left with seventy thousand dollars in the bank. Now chances are you probably don't have a million dollars in your checkings account to go and buy this property cash, so you'll have to go to the bank and get some debt to buy this property. Now what you're doing is you're using debt to buy income. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to come to the closing table with some cash. So the bank might give you $800,000 and you'll have to bring about $200,000 to the closing table. Now, if you don't have all $200,000 yourself, this is where you'd have to go out and network with some people and go out and raise this $200,000. So you have $200,000 of equity, $800,000 of debt. Now what happens is you're making $70,000 a year of profit, but you still have to pay your debt. So you'll have to pay about $52,000 in debt, which would leave you with $18,000 of net income after your debt payments. So now this $18,000 is left in the bank account after all of your expenses are paid, but you don't have to pay taxes on all $18,000 because you invested in real estate. Real estate offers some of the most favorable tax breaks that our tax code has to offer because they offer something called the depreciation deduction, which says that every single year you get to depreciate the value of the building on your real estate. So let's assume that 20% of the cost, so $200,000, is the cost of the land of what you bought, and the other 80%, the $800,000, is for the actual building, the actual apartments on the property. 
Well, if it's an apartment complex, you get to deduct 1 39th of that amount, so 1 39th of $800,000 every single year over the next 39 years. That means you will get to take a deduction of right around $20,000 $500 every year for 39 years, which means you have a loss of $2,500. Now, you gotta understand what this means. You have $18,000 in your bank account. This is money that you can spend, but you get to go around and tell the IRS, hey, I made $18,000, but I get to take this tax break, this tax deduction for $20,500. So you have a tax loss of $2,500, which means you owe $0 in taxes, because remember, you only pay taxes on income, and to the IRS, you have no income. Actually, you have a loss while you still have money in the bank to spend. But this is where things get even more interesting, because before, when you bought this property, you had a uh, profit of $70,000. But now what a lot of real estate investors will do is they'll start doing some more renovations on the property. They're gonna work to improve the property, that way they can increase the amount of money that they're making. So maybe now you start adding in some stainless steel appliances. You update the kitchens, you update the bathrooms. That way now you can charge a little bit more money for your rent because you're providing more value for your tenants. And so now over the next few years, you're able to drive up your income from $70,000 a year to $100,000 a year. Now you can go back to the bank and say, hey, we drove up our profits. Before we were only making $70,000 a year, that's when we were worth a million dollars, but now we are making $100,000 a year. Now the bank is gonna say, oh yeah, you've definitely increased the value of your property, so we don't think you're worth a million dollars anymore. We think that your apartment complex is worth $1.5 million. So now what you get to do is you get to refinance against this property. So if we do the same thing and you pull out some cash, let's assume that you pull out 1.1 million. Now what you get to do is you take $800,000 from here, you pay off the old loan. You take $200,000 from here, you pay off all the investors. And that still leaves $100,000 that now you can put in your pocket for putting this deal together. And remember, this is tax free because this is debt. This isn't income. So you get to pull out $100,000 for yourself, even if you didn't put in a single penny if you brought in other investors, but a lot of times you're gonna have to have some skin in the game. You're gonna have to put in some of your own cash, but this $100,000 now is yours. Now, of course, along with that, your debt payments are gonna go up as well. So now you're making $100,000 a year and your debt payments are gonna go up to around $72,000 a year, which still nets you $28,000 a year in positive cash flow after paying your debt but now you own the property free and clear. You don't have any of your own money in the property. Your investors don't have any money in the property. It's just the bank's money. And so this profit is your return on your $0 invested in the property. You have no cash in the deal, but you're still making $28,000 a year. This is why it's called an infinite return. And you can keep doing this again and again and again, as long as the value of the asset is strong. Now, it wouldn't be right for me to not talk about any of the risks because one of the reasons why people get in so much trouble trying to do this is they either over leverage or they don't understand the asset. They don't know what they're doing because at the end of the day, the value of you being able to do this depends on the value of your property and the value of your property is gonna depend on how much money you're making. So you need to know how to manage the property. You need to know how to get the property leased. You need to know how to give good value to your tenants and you need to know how to keep generating these types of profits. If you don't know what you're doing, if you get greedy, you start over leveraging, well then you're the first one that's gonna get foreclosed on when property values go down and the bank wants their money. But this is one of the ways that real estate investors are able to leverage debt to pay no money in taxes while growing their wealth at the exact same time. This is why I said in the beginning of this video that one of the biggest lies that we're told is that the mortgage deduction that you get when you buy a home to live in is a big tax break for the average American. Now, what that really is, is not a tax break, it's a tax incentive. Because when you get a home, you buy a million dollar home or a half a million dollar home or a hundred thousand dollar home and you get a mortgage on it, you're gonna have to pay money in interest. So assuming you pay $10,000 a year in interest to the bank, you still have to have an income to pay for that interest in order to get this tax incentive. Now, in order to get that income, you're gonna have to go out and do something else versus if you are a real estate investor, remember what I said in the beginning, you're buying income. That's why wealthy people go into debt. They're going into debt to buy income from the asset and the asset that you're buying is what's paying for your mortgage and putting some money in your pocket. It's cash flowing. 
when we're talking about your home, you have to have an income. You have to go to work every single day to pay off the mortgage to get this tax incentive, not even the tax break or the tax credit. You're getting a little tax deduction from the interest that you have to pay, but you just have to work to get the money to pay it versus here, the assets doing all the work for you. Then it just goes back to the buy, borrow, die. You keep doing this again and again and again, and then you can do this until you die. And then when you die, you pass it on to your heirs. And then when your heirs get it, they get the stepped up basis. So they get a tax break when they go on to sell the asset. Now I know all of this might seem really complicated. You don't have to go in and start buying million dollar deals right off of the bat. You don't have to go in and leverage yourself up to the eyeballs. There's a lot of ways to do this. And there's ways to do this without taking on a whole bunch of risk, just depending on what your risk tolerance is and what you're okay with and how fast you want to see your growth. But it all starts with your financial education and it all starts with one deal. Like I started my first real estate deal with a small 1,000 square foot condo and it was a major, major headache because I had no idea what I was doing. But now real estate investing is a lot easier because I have the right people and I know what I'm doing, which makes the process so much more simpler and so much more passive. But you have to get started and you need the right financial education. And if you're looking for some help, I put together a free one hour lesson on how you can make your first real estate investment where I go over a real estate investment deal that I recently did. You can watch this lesson for free on Market Insiders. It's an investing education app that I created. So if you want to watch this free one hour lesson on real estate investing, I'll put the link down for you in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on three investments you need to make if you never want to worry about money again. And if you want to download my free real estate lesson on how to start investing, all you got to do is click that button below. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.